I first met my co-host when she had a syndicated talk show all about sex. Sex with Sue. Sue McGarvey. And I am the Milkman John Milky, host of The Milkman Show. Heard on radio stations across North America. And my home base, BlastTheRadio.com. We're glad you're here. Let's get turned on. Oh my gosh. We're, we're in a totally different location. The microphones probably sound a little different if you're listening to the audio portion of the podcast because we are in the basement. Party on, Mar- Garth. Yeah. Yes, we are. Uh, yeah, in my basement today. Whoa, because the RV is getting a little TLC. Yes, yes. Apparently, the RV cannot be used for cruising without cruise control. So, go figure. <laughs> cruise control is getting fixed. Anyway, what is on the agenda today? You got some fun topics, as we always. do. We do. We are talking about um, your sexual horoscope. Not really your horoscope, because I'm not really a horoscope kind of girl. But it's who, which, which signs you know do it better. So we can talk about better. Aquarius like better be on this list, yeah, right, right at the top. And vitamin D, which is why you have more sex in the summertime. If you are not on vitamin D, you should be because it makes you hornier. It's all about the D. I like the gummies that you get, and they taste like candy. And when I'm hungry, I can eat vitamin Ds because you can have up to 13,000 IUs without any ill effects, according to Dr. Oz. Dun, dun, dun. Dun, dun, dun. All right. Is sex better when it's planned or spontaneous? Yes. Everybody thinks so, different ways, and what happens, new study, we had a couple of listener questions, something about girls kissing girls at parties, and weird ass things that people want to have sex with. This is more than your vacuum cleaner. All right. All right. And we've got an interesting one as well from a couple who are swingers, and he's having some questions, so we're both going to weigh in on that. Perfect. All right. That's all coming up on another edition of Turned On, the podcast. All right, so first up, what's better, planned sex or spontaneous sex? Well, according to the research, everybody believes that spontaneous sex is better. But what they were finding is it's a myth because if you think you might get laid, you've you've shaved your legs. If you think you might get laid, (laughs) you've washed the girl bits. If you think you might get laid, I always tell people who are trying to have another baby or the wife wants another baby, and I'll tell the partner, you know that that's a Friday night and a bottle of wine, right? You might think it's spontaneous. They have it planned. They know when they're ovulating. It's a whole thing. Okay. So Esther Perel, the sex therapist for Sex Therapist, says that according to the, it was actually at York University that did the research, most people believe it's better to just kind of get it on spontaneously except that there are people that plan sex and do a much better job and they're feeling more comfortable if you're a type a person you like to know that everything's ready that you're not too full that you're not too cold this is great tiktok to a really comedian talking about that you know who fucks when they're too full right who fucks when they're hungry <laughs> who fucks when they're it's you like know, swimming like you gotta swim, let it you know? sit you gotta let the food sit for a well, while and they said it has that. to be dark but not serial killer dark you know where they're hiding the blood stains and you know you have to <laughs> and and you've got to have the right kind of lighting and the right kind of you know fall drapery so you cover your middle with all the stretch marks some people feel more comfortable if they are, you know, planning it. What do you think? Uh, I'm more the spontaneous type because if I overthink anything, my anxiety just gets to me and, and I can't perform well. Okay. So I would say... You like, you like it when it I'm not happens. a doctor, but I would say um, whatever floats your boat. Okay. Bo- both would be the correct answer, well, I would think. Well, planned sex, you know, it's, it's the partner has this idea that a lot of prep goes in and this a strong desire. So there, But there was things that did come out of the study. So they found that if people, you know, if their partners really liked to plan it, the other partner didn't wasn't as sexually satisfied. So you have to pretend if you're so the basically the the long and short of it is if you're a planner, pretend it's spontaneous, even if you've set it up. Because if you're just, you know, if you've set it all up, not you know, sort of a glass of wine by the bed and and flower petals, not that obvious. But if you've kind of just you know, nudge in and say, you wanna? You know, they may think it's spontaneous, but ah, you know. Ah, ha, ha. Ah, ha. Sneaky Sue. I know. So if uh, if you, you have a thought about this, please send me an email, sue at sexwithsue.com. I am not getting nearly enough emails from you, but I am getting some, so thank you for those who participate. And I have a uh, bathroom full of uh, Zumios, so I'm prepared to donate okay. another one to the cause. All right. If somebody uh, chooses to uh, step up and send me a note. Sue at sexwithsue.com. All of our contact information, of course, also on our website, turnedonpodcast.com. Mm-hmm. 
Okay. I'm an Aquarius. That's water sports. I mean, a water sign. Uh, <laughs> no, but we're not talking about golden what? showers here. <laughs> What's your sign? I'm a Sagittarius. Okay. Right in the cusp, just before Christmas. So we're going to talk astrology and how it relates to sex here. Well, apparently... We we're just talking about spontaneous sex and, you know, sort of planned sex. Apparently, Geminis have the most spontaneous sex planned. So just so you know, if you're a Gemini, does that, does that resonate with you? But Sagittarius is, that's me, um, admit to planning intimate time in advance followed by 48%. We are the planners in the, in, yeah, I don't know. <laughs> uh, you plan everything. Uh, versus the spontaneous Geminis, the 46 of Aquarius and Taurus apparently plan theirs. Leos have a preference for different times of the day. They tend to like mornings <laughs> versus the Virgos who are night people. Are you all a right. night person? Do you like all it right. late at night? And all around, they think those fire signs, apparently the Scorpios, man, they're, uh, they're apparently hell to live with, but, you know, freak between the sheets. Okay. So that's the, that's the thinking. So with some of the new research that's coming out and, you know, we talk about, and I don't know about horoscopes, but I'm sure there are some people that are really into it. So f tell me if you have it. Because there's all, every day there's new sex research. You know, we mentioned that that vitamin C, vitamin D. If you increase it, get out, get sunshine. It's what you do. And if you don't get it, you get something called rickets, and it's like you know some rare malnutritive disease. But you can take vitamin D. It will make you hornier, as will something called DHEA, which you cannot buy in Canada over the counter. It's a prescription, but it's over the counter in the U.S. And Amazon.com will deliver it not Amazon.ca, and it is a, basically, I describe it as the wild card in poker. Your body uses it for whatever it is you need. So if you need a little horny boost, and it's most closely related to testosterone, works really well with vitamin D, get your, uh, it's something called DHEA, not to be confused with DHA, which is stuff in omega-3, DHEA, have a look at it on Amazon.com, get it delivered, try 25 to 50 milligrams a day, no more, and see what happens, and then you will write me a note and say, I'm a genius. Okay, so Amazon.com yes, we'll will deliver to Canada. Yes, they will. Even Takes though you longer. don't have a prescription. Uh huh. I'm fascinated by that. Isn't it cool? That's weird. It's Turned On the Podcast, available at turnedonpodcast.com, Apple, Spotify, Google, and you can ask your smart speaker as well to play Turned On the Podcast. I'm John Milky the Milkman. She is sex therapist Sue McGarvey. About to answer a question that I have my own theories on <laughs> and have for a while. <laughs> Let's see if we align on this. Why is it, Sue, that straight women end up making out with other women at parties? Okay, well, guess what? There was yet another study. They mainly did it with college women, although they did it from women age, ages 21 to 41. Okay. So they asked them, what motivates you, if you consider yourself heterosexual or straight, to kiss another woman? And, yes, you think, what do you think? Free drinks all night. <laughs> Especially if there's lots of tongue the and guys, cleavage. The guys will be lined up to buy drinks all night. If you keep kissing other women. Absolutely. Absolutely. Okay. For a lot of women, it's the desire, the need for experimentation, that they okay. want to flirt, they want to play, they want to, you know, do that. So there's actual, uh, actually some, you know, authenticity Authenticity. To it. Okay. They're attracted by sexuality, but because they've had a few drinks, I think most women are on the bisexual spectrum, in my opinion. My opinion, I believe that. I'd and, like to believe that. Well, there are some that I know that are just, like, not interested in other girls, but most people go from, like, you know, we're really straight to really gay and everywhere in between. And women are far more open to trying that. That's true. And there is some, you know, desire in that. There's also, you know, they want to explore sort of bisexuality. And I think you'd be far, you know, most people would be surprised at how far they'd go. And most women, if they're honest, when they've done the studies, have some bisexual fantasies. All right, so that's it. Then they do it for shock, male attention, social pressure, 33%. And free drinks, right? And free drinks. The well, male attention they didn't would say be the that. free drinks. The male attention is, I'm going to turn, I'm going to twist him up, and he is going to follow me like a puppy dog. It's there you not go. about the, yeah, it's, a, it's about the attention. I want attention in a sure. bar. And you've sure. had a few drinks, which means your inhibitions are down. Absolutely. And so you, most of the people who said that they were doing it for experimentation, 
thought of it as a positive experience. I kissed a girl and I like it. We should play a little Katy Katy Perry, you know, in the middle of all that. If we were allowed to have music on the podcast, we absolutely would be. We absolutely would be playing Katy Perry. But I'm I'm 99% sure that anybody listening right now is singing it on their own. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Taste taste her cherry lip gloss. Yeah, right. All right. So that's I highly recommend Kissing Girls. Kissing Girls? Yeah. (laughs) And I liked it. It's turned on the podcast. Sue was just saying she's not getting as many emails as she'd like, so fill her inbox up, please. It's Sue at sexwithsue.com. Free therapy. Yep, exactly. That saves you hundreds of dollars. Hundreds of dollars. Thousands by the time the year is done. All right, I gotta take my glasses off for this. Um, this is a letter from someone who says, My partner and I started swinging during the pandemic. We've kind of dipped in and out of activities as our schedules and energies and health orders permit. However, recently she's had some challenges at work and her doctor prescribed antidepressants. Uh-huh. I've been on those. A horrible side effect is that she no longer experiences any real escalation in her arousal mm-hmm. and cannot orgasm. Yep. We've talked about that yep, on previous yep, yep, episodes. Yep, yep, it's a thing. We generally work around this between ourselves and know that it's a time-limited restriction. However, she feels less inclined to be involved with others and is instead encouraging me to go out solo. I don't find that idea as exciting as going together, in part because I'm shy and socially awkward. I also dislike the experience we've had of many of the other single men we've met at events and don't want to be that to others. At the same time, I think she's getting excited by the the idea of me bringing home another woman or bringing home exciting stories, and that in itself is a turn-on. If I were to do this, what would be your recommendations as to how to start? Doop, 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 doop. Talk about it a few hundred thousand times. Yeah. Make sure you have your rules, your contracts, your lists, your safe words. Was she really clear? Dip a toe, come back and talk about it. Dip another toe, come back and talk about it. Do not dive into the bottom of the orgy pile and think everything's going to be fine. I mean, you're having reservations. And just like Sue said, and like we've talked about in the past, when it comes to swinging, it is all about communication. And you have to have you know, uh, like like key words to get you out of situations that you're not comfortable in and limits, and those need to be discussed and respected at all times. Look, it's a hot idea, I think, for most guys especially, uh, to be given the green light to go and play with whoever you want to play with, come home and tell me stories. The reverse of that, of course, you're a hot wife. Is there a term for the, is there a hot husband? It's a stag. A stag? Yes. Interesting. Okay. I hadn't heard that. Mm-hmm. Um, there's stag, there's bulls. Bulls are bulls are guys that just go off and, you know, bang other women's Typically things. single, though, yes? Yeah, typically single. You know, stag and vixen often means the couple where they're bringing in somebody else or, a, you know, a third. Yep. But it, it can be both of those terms. I get the reservation. And, you know, if your heart's not in it, then you need to be honest with your wife and say, look, you know, I, I like doing this with you. I like doing this with us. I'm not comfortable on my own. I I would also say to another couple, you know, like if if you know if there's like this is a legitimate reason, and say, look, I, we're really interested in you as a couple. The challenge is she's not that into sex at all, but would love to be part of the experience. Let's all have dinner together, and the three of us are going to play. She's going to go for water because that's what she wants, you know, just sort of be around to tell the story, to see us, to make sure, like, it's all part of that. So she could be in the room she essentially the as room. a cuck. As a cuck, yeah. Okay. And be part of that experience but not play. I like that's, that approach. That's certainly um, a possibility. I think honesty is the best policy. And you can meet people. Again, you ask 100 different swingers what they want, you get 100 different answers. And you will find somebody that thinks that that's cool. What about a couple that you've both played with before that you like, that maybe you've had multiple encounters with, uh, who would be open and you know to a conversation where you can articulate you know the issue at hand, that this is a temporary thing, uh, we'd like to keep playing, but uh, she she can't be part of things right now or doesn't want to be part of things right now, is this a dynamic that would work for you guys? Because then at least there's a comfort and a trust level built in there. Yes, or go to the club. Go to a club, go to a swing club as a couple. And, you know, he goes into the playroom, you don't, right? So that they, that every, the partner knows he's not a creepy single guy, but and, she's and, at, and she's she she's a, a great she's, wing yeah she's for you. enjoying you know yeah, she's yeah. enjoying dancing or she's enjoying working the buffet or she's enjoying talking to people about their kids and the guys are play like everybody's playing over there okay fine that's cool I've seen that happen with great results 
because if there's a trust level between you, it doesn't matter. It's uh, it's understanding that those dynamics are going to be there, and you don't want to you know fall into a hole. You want things to be safe and comfortable. She wants things to be safe and comfortable. And the more you can be clear about that, the uh, the easier it's going to go. And again, you won't know how you feel until you get there. That's the thing about swinging. It's not right. a, I can't anticipate it. It's a ready, fire, aim. And right. then you tweak every, it. And every situation is different. We talked yeah. earlier about planned sex versus spontaneous sex. And that's, you know, like a swinging situation is exactly that. You've planned for the potential of it. But if it happens, it can be quite spontaneous despite all the planning that goes into it, right? So anyway, there's a, a few options for you that maybe you hadn't considered before that open up the lines of communication and, and things for you to discuss. Let us know what you uh, ultimately choose, though. Please, sue at sexwithsue.com. You already know that because you emailed us, and we thank you for that. Turnedonpodcast.com. All of our contact information is there. The podcast, um, resources, yes. uh, links to us. We're going to see uh, more blogging. Life account, yep. um, <laughs> Your Fet Life account, really? YouTube? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've got, I've got one. I, I, I have a sex with Sue one. If you want to email me, and on YouTube, Life. and YouTube is what I want to point And Lemon, Lemon Social, and le all of the things turned on podcast.com. So I said to Sue, what do you want to discuss in this next segment? She said, let's talk about weird shit. All right. So, you know, sometimes you just want to hear the weird sex stories. You know, like the the, 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 the guy that, that starts having sex with the, you know, the intake valve in the, in the, you know, in the swimming pool and they have to call the ambulance because he's screaming in pain or... I do have a morbid fascination with those stories, yes. Do you? I, everybody does. Right. Everybody does. It's the, you know, go, I, I heard one recently... Women, I, I, I talk to all the ER nurses, right? Every time I find somebody's an ER nurse, oh, 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 tell me the story. Come on, what do you got? And she says, recently, potato up his ass. And I'm like, <sighs> oh, I mean, just like, she's like, it was, it was petrified. It was like, there was a whole process. And yeah. yet we all know that ER nurses have all of these stories. And yet you end up at the ER. What do you do? You try and bullshit them. <laughs> yeah, don't. don't just tell, tell them, them what happened they've seen it all <laughs> everything and then they giggle about it afterwards sure. in, the, in the staff room so don't do it as i'm sure you do too if, plus, if you're the person who's if there you're going to put something up your ass make sure it has a base because the rectum has a bit of a vacuum so it's going to suck up whatever the hell you're putting up there make sure it has a base and it doesn't it does. end up in your lower intestine it does but can i also say in my experience even though uh, one of those big chrome yeah, yeah, metallic yeah, yeah. butt plugs okay up it goes fantastic it's got the stem but the stem kept going no shit it happened to me she's it like, happened to has, me has a cave in there like it I'm scared sorry. the living daylights out of me sue and let me tell you it all worked out fine but that makes one hell of a racket when it hits the porcelain in the toilet oh sweetie <laughs> so, okay get the ones with, with the extra wide base because you obviously have or, a cave up there or yeah. well maybe i do <laughs> Maybe tie a string to it just in case. Okay, important okay. safety tip. Important yeah. safety tip from Turned On the Podcast. Okay. So if you've really been really been gaping and 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 making sure that you're ready for yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. yeah or, or, or you've lubed a little too much. Be a little I, I turned down a a uh, something that went on the Duckling Facebook group about somebody, everybody saying, How do we want to get we want to get pegged? And like, you know, this whole video about guys yeah. Anyway, there, there's ass a whole place thing, fun. ass place fun. So, but there is a bunch of stories, and I don't know what it is about this week, full moon, whatever. Some guy is on a bright, like basically a cocktail of booze and drugs, and he's on a train in the UK and decides he wants to have sex with the train, like the cart, the food cart, takes down his pants, and is... I mean, it's awfully warm yeah, can you, and humid in there. Can you think about there. it? Yeah, can you think about <laughs> it like, like the one on the airplane? And, you know, just like you've lost your mind and all of a sudden, you know, I want to kiss you, I want to hump you. And they're, and they're, the, whatever they're hallucinating, it's the, tr it's the cart, the, the food cart. Like, you're like, ah, somebody had, somebody decided he was so high, he set fire to a package of peanuts and was sort of dancing around the fire of peanuts. And then tried to have, when the ambulance came, because they came first, because somebody called it, tried to have sex with the side of the ambulance. So it, again, just say no to drugs in alcohol in terms of saying that. Sex with a vacuum cleaner. <laughs> and this one guy got arrested this week because he had a cheese fetish and he was asking random women if he could pay them money to put cheese on his genitals. Like melted, warm, 
I don't know. Melting. I I didn't. Like there wasn't cheese. enough. De- you know, it's not enough details. You just get the crazy shit that comes up, and I just think I need more details. Sue. I know. I know. <laughs> well, and I did mention that I wanted to. I wanted to say that the worst sex scene, according to GQ, that has ever been created, uh-huh. was done by a Canadian. The Weekend. You know, makes great music. I think he should stick to his lane. Oh, so this is recent. This is this week. And apparently, he was oh, having this, week. this having again crazy things that happened this week. Apparently, uh, he was having sex with. Um, Lily Depp, daughter of. Okay. Um, and they apparently she had to carry the scene, but it was apparently the most awkward, the most awful <laughs> sex scene in the history of filming. So that's saying a lot. You know I'm what's sure funny about some that? Bad porn. Yeah. The last story I heard about the weekend just a couple of weeks ago. He wants to go back to using his real name. I think it's like, now we know why. why? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> So weird shit happened, you know. Weekend, you know, you can, you, we, we'll say nice things about you because, you know, you're, you're great. You get a place. We want, we want to feel the love, but uh, apparently, you need to stay out of the sex scenes because you're not good at it. A short and sweet version of the show this week, but we are going to have to make sure we hit at least the 30-minute mark every week going forward, because Sue and I have received an invitation. We can't tell you where yet. Well, we'll tell you where. Ottawa. Mm -hmm. We can't tell you what station yet, but we've been invited to put Turned On the Podcast on the air on an FM radio station. We have. Beginning in July. And if you are a program director and want us, I'm sure we can make a deal. Let's make a deal. We can make a deal. And all the more reason for you to be a sponsor on this podcast now as well, because we can bring you with us to uh, a growing podcast now broadcast. When's the last time you did a show on FM radio? Was it the, is it when we met back in? No, no, I was on, uh, I was on Boom for a while and okay. I, did, I was on Easy Rock doing uh, Love and Lipstick. Oh, that's right. Yes. Love and Lipstick. Yes. Okay. You know, it's, it's who gets the wet spot but uh, again it was too edgy but it's yeah it's it's uh, been a while for regular broadcasting uh, and but i don't have to stay on to be live that yeah. was, and that was there, the and challenge there. with live radio you had to actually be ass in the seats i got like two weeks off a year or you had to go from like the end no. of your show and catch a flight and then be back no. before the next one I now mean, we have modern modern technology yeah, we've, we've got it set up soon i can do this from anywhere and we will and um, we will and we are from my basement mm-hmm. yeah yeah wayne's world wayne's today world. from the basement um often from the rv i'm going to be RV in New Brunswick and Nova Scotia for a little while. Uh, so I'll be in the RV. You'll be here. So anyway, it always works out that we can do the podcast. And now the radio show. Again, we can't tell you exactly where, but Ottawa coming to an FM radio station near you. Uh, we will have the details, of course, at turnedonpodcast.com. Uh, hey, if you got a question for Sue, you've got comments on the podcast. We're on Google. We're on Spotify. We're on Apple Podcasts. We're on iHeart. We're on Amazon Music. Uh, ask your smart speaker to play Turned On, the podcast. We'd love to hear from you. What's the email address, Sue? Sue at sexwithsue.com. Look forward to another conversation a week from now.